For 13 years before founding CrowdSpring, I was an attorney. I represented many entrepreneurs as well as small and large companies and noticed that most made similar mistakes when starting their businesses. In this video, I'll share the top 10 mistakes that people make when starting a new business and ways that you can avoid those mistakes. Here we go. Mistake number one, choosing the wrong ownership structure. This is your most important decision when starting a new business. If you're going to be looking for outside investment, you'll want to create an ownership structure that's friendly to those investors. Nearly all outside investors prefer the stock structure of a corporation as opposed to a partnership or a limited liability company. Remember that if you select the wrong ownership structure, you may be personally liable for your company's debts. And you have to create that ownership structure before you enter into any agreements or contracts. Think about the following issues when deciding what type of entity to register. What are the potential liabilities and risks? What are the anticipated tax benefits from being taxed as a partnership or a corporation? Do you intend to have outside investors? Do you expect to sell your company? Are you pursuing a risky business where you might be sued personally? If you're a sole proprietor, for example, you're personally liable for your company's debts. While this is generally the simplest form of ownership, it is also very risky. In a partnership, the partners can be personally liable for the debts of the business. One benefit, however, of a sole proprietorship and partnership is that the income and loss from the business flows to you. The company does not pay a separate corporate tax like if, would, if it was a corporation. To insulate yourself from legal risk, you can form a corporation. Corporations have the most demanding record-keeping requirements and pay a separate corporate tax in addition to what you pay personally for the share of the money you receive from the corporation. As long as you follow all corporate formalities, periodic meetings, corporate records, etc., you will generally insulate yourself from personal liability for the debts of your company if you're a corporation. You can get the tax benefits of a partnership and the legal insulation of a corporation by organizing as a limited liability company, known as an LLC. LLCs pay annual taxes and reporting fees in the hundreds of dollars annually, but they don't need to keep the same corporate records or corporations. And this is what we did with CrowdSpring. It was easier to form, but over the years I formed many different kinds of entities. Mistake number two, lack of poor organizational documents. It's not enough for you to decide just on the right ownership structure for your new business. If you decide on a structure that requires documentation, like a corporation, you have to create and maintain these documents. If you don't have such documents, or if you fail to follow the necessary corporate formalities, you expose yourself to personal risks because courts may pierce the corporate veil and find you personally liable if they believe that you intermingled your personal records with those of the corporation. If your entity is an LLC, you generally aren't required to have a written LLC agreement, which explains the rights and liabilities of the members of the LLC, but it's a good practice to have one if you have co-founders, investors, or employees. Because if you ever get into a dispute, you need it. Think of it as a prenuptial agreement that defines everybody's rights in case things go wrong. And of course, you'll need to decide where to organize your company. Delaware, Nevada, and a few other states are more business friendly, but for most people, perfectly fine to organize you in your own home state. Make a list of the things you need to do and make sure you comply. Mistake number three, lack of proper corporate records. Now, it's no secret that, that most people uh, don't do a good job keeping good records. If your corporate records are a mess, you can face personal liability for the debts of your company. And you can create problems if somebody wants to acquire your company. So how can you avoid this problem? Familiarize yourself with the documents you must create and maintain. For example, there are very specific requirements for documents a corporation must maintain, such as minutes of the board of directors and other documents. And then compile a set of all these documents. Make sure you pay all your taxes and file annual reports or your company can get dissolved. Mistake number four, accepting money from investors without considering securities laws. It's up to you to make sure that your investment documents follow securities laws. If they don't, you expose yourself to big risk. If an investor loses money in an investment, they will tell their attorney to investigate whether appropriate disclosures were made and documented under the securities law. If they were not, they may sue you. Security laws are complicated 
And it's important that you consult an attorney when dealing with investors. If you can't afford an attorney, consider hiring an attorney who would be willing to counsel you in exchange for a small equity stake in your company. Typically, you might pay twenty to 50000 or more, depending on the complexity, in forming a company. But more attorneys have started creating more affordable packages targeting startups that can lower that cost to $2,500 to $10,000. Mistake five, failing to check the founders and employees' non-compete agreements. Many employment agreements contain non-competition clauses, which prohibit a person from competing with their employer for a period of time, and that's typically years after the employment ends. If a former employer or your employee's former employer believes that your new business is competing or will be competing with them, they won't like it. Depending on the risk they face from you or your employees competing against them, they may threaten legal action and may sue, and this could be very expensive. It's also very distracting when you're starting a new company. Read your own employment agreement to see if there are any restrictions and competition. And once you've read it, talk to your former employer and disclose what you plan to do. Often, this is enough. Or consult an attorney to make sure you're not bound to a non-competition agreement. And of course, if you have co-founders, read each other's employment agreements to confirm that none of you are bound by non-compete provisions. An angry former employer can damage your small business if they decide to flex their muscles and enforce of non-compete. I've represented many businesses that ran into this problem when the founders didn't read their prior agreements. Similarly, any employee you plan to hire, ask them if they're bound by non-compete agreement in their employment agreement and ask to look at a copy of that provision so that you could be satisfied you're not exposing yourself or your company to legal risk. Mistake number six, weak or non-existent employment and option agreements. Now, many startups and small businesses don't create appropriate employment or option agreements for their employees, and this is a huge mistake. If you don't protect your rights with an appropriate employment agreement, you risk having your employee later leave to compete with you or risk not acquiring intellectual property rights to things they invent while working for you. And, of course, you create disputes because the respective rights and responsibilities will not be clearly defined in writing. On the first day, create an employment agreement that you, you, you'll use with every employee. You'll end up using nearly the same agreement for everyone. So if you incur some legal expense for that first agreement, it'll come in handy over and over again. Have your attorney create an appropriate form agreements and then ask your attorney for terms that vary from that agreement. And if you don't have a budget for an attorney, use an inexpensive online product like Quickly Legal, quicklylegal.com to easily and quickly create the necessary legal documents and obtain electronic signatures. Mistake number seven, weak or non-existent vendor client written agreements. Many small business owners believe that a handshake is enough, and it's not. It's very difficult to uphold a verbal agreement in court. I know this because I've litigated many cases involving verbal agreements. A properly written agreement can protect your interests and rights. A written agreement can also save you a lot of aggravation and legal expense of having to enforce those rights. A good attorney should be able to quickly review a written agreement and give you feedback and suggested revisions. Or use a product like Quickly Legal, which I mentioned above, which is easy to understand legal agreements for small businesses and startups. Mistake number eight, ignoring intellectual property. Many small businesses, especially non-technology small businesses, believe they don't have any intellectual property. Truth is, they do. I've represented many clients in non-tech industries in many patent, trademark, and copyright disputes dealing with mundane non-technical products and services. If you ignore intellectual property, you may fail to protect your rights and may not properly acquire ownership to the intellectual property that's critical to the success of your business. For example, if an employee invented a new technology or process in your business, you want your employment agreement to specify they will assign those inventions to you so that you own this. This is a complex area, and it's unlikely you'll get it by reading, but you should at least understand the basics. And of course, consult an attorney on any issues you don't understand. Mistake number nine, litigation. Litigation is expensive, very expensive. The only people who will make out well in litigation are attorneys. 
Your small business cannot afford to spend a big part of your time and money focused on litigation. In fact, it's not unusual for a company to pay more in legal fees than to settle the case. Do your best uh, to avoid getting involved in litigation. Seek legal advice before you make important decisions that can lead to litigation. And insist that every agreement include a meditation or binding arbitration provision. Both of these options are cheaper than litigation. And the final mistake, failing to get legal advice when appropriate. Many small businesses and startups try to save on legal costs by avoiding hiring an attorney. Some try to get by on their own by cutting and pasting from different legal documents they found online. And this is a very dangerous practice. You don't know whether the sources are credible, whether the documents you've put together are appropriate or complete, or even contradictory. Now it's true, attorneys are expensive. Good attorneys are very expensive. However, smart attorneys who counsel small businesses and startups understand their clients have limited budgets. Experienced attorneys can save you time, aggravation, and money by providing the right advice at the right time. Don't compromise your business by not getting legal advice when necessary. I hope that you've picked up a few tips on avoiding common mistakes most people make when forming a company. Good luck with your new business.